parents are very strict. And where are you going with those skates? Where are your helmet? Are you doing that too? Are you jumping on those banisters? Hi. 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 Um, I'm in a different location tonight. And it's night time. We haven't done one at night yet. No, it's a first. It's very dark. So anyway, um, so uh, Jared, Jago, Nui. Um, it probably goes by some more names other than that. Um, um, I, I've kind of always thought that he was like the Jim Morrison of rollerblading. Oh, that's such a good description of him. Eh? But, but now, but now, um, lately, when I think about him, I kind of think of Stephen Adams. For the some basketballer. reason, yeah, it might just be his hair, or like maybe it's like how big he is, and he always always used to like. Sometimes he would like rock basketball singlets. True, and in yeah. his later years, he does wear a lot of like. Um, camo like duck he, he, you, oh, like he looks like a duck hunter he's got like all yeah. the camo yeah. stuff which is like Steve Adams and yeah but um either way like yeah um he's been around for ages too um yeah. and yeah um really really good at skating at the peak of his skating like he was kind of like the last guy you'd ever want to have a collision with at a skate park um <laughs> So we've got some different questions. I've got some different questions for him compared to the other people we've talked to. Um, yeah. What about you? Yeah, I've got some interesting ones. Um, he was he he is very creative um, in skating and outer skating. So there's a whole lot of questions to ask him about that and how we got onto some of the stuff he's into. Yeah, and you've um, you've got us some little treats too as well to show. <laughs> Show, the show and so tell. <laughs> we'll have them later on. So should we um should we should we get them? Yeah, let's bring them in. Sounds so flash, bring them in. Whoa, there bring them in. <laughs> That's super intense. Move that bus. There we go. Oh, he's got skating memorabilia. You got to turn your phone, Jago. Look at you, you've got like a like a set. Now yeah. Where are you? We can't see you. Your phone's... Oh, hold on. I'm coming. She's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Why is... How come it's sideways for me? It's sideways, Jago. You want it up and downways? Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're... I don't know if I send you a photo of how it looks. I haven't watched your thing before. It looks on the screen. Yeah, is it just on your phone? I don't know. What are you doing? Yeah, it is on your phone. That's perfect. Leave it that way. You surrounded yourself with skating paraphernalia? I bladed it up. You have to go through the blade paraphernalia first and just explain what you've got. Neam oh, can... thought he was good with the daily bread frame on the wall. I, I kicked over some boxes for you, Neam. <laughs> oh, that's what that was. <laughs> Raspberry slice. With my AA card, in case you crash into the back of the Mazda Six, <laughs> <laughs> and and my clipboard with my instructions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Half a bit. Right, what, what else you got? Doing? I just gotta just ignore me for a bit. I gotta change my screen because it's jumping in and out. So while while Joss is doing that, why don't you explain what else you've got around you, Jago? Um, I've got some, I've got some old fatties. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's got some of those. Got a few old vids. Oh, old damage goods. I think that's Hoax 5. All right. And then the black and blue and red all over. Oh, that was an ASA video. Hey. Yeah, those ones. What else? Oh. 
some of my plates that I made. Someone was asking about those. Yep, I'm gonna bring that up a bit later. A bit of blade jam. Oh, nice. Weird I representing. Oh, just a little thing I made for my NFT just to commemorate that. Nice. Thanks, Arlo. Thanks, Brock. What else? Um, black spider for the painting thing in the background. Um, my old mind game, the classic black sheep t shirt. And, nice. um, and one of Rob's bootleg blading shirts. Oh, you've gone all out. Hold you on. you actually you you didn't set this all up. You sit amongst this most of the time at home, don't you? Got my blading used cup. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I've got to up my game. All I've got is a daily bread and a can oh, of my, completely pro with. Over for you. <laughs> <laughs> you went and raided the recycling bin at your local countdown. I, yeah, no, nah, they got hand delivered. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Good to see you, man. Hi, Joss. Good to see hey, you. Bro. Good. How are you? Oh, you clearly, clearly doing well. Yeah, I'm all right. Are, are those your current skates? These ones, yeah. The um, USD Aeon Richie Eisler models with a few little tweaks here and there. But it's pretty good. Cool. I'm running Fat Boys from 94 in the middle, or 95, these exact wheels that Horgan gave me. Um, I'm running a size 14 liner that Horgan gave me, that is somehow comfortable in a size 11. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, um, the stock wheels that come with them. How are you still rolling in the stock wheels when you've had those skates for like two years? Uh, turning. Both ways, maybe. <laughs> That'd be better. Just skating the lounge. Yeah, just lounging around. Skate, you can. That's good. Yeah. Sweet. Um, you're number three, not for any particular reason, but it's cool that you're number three. We're really happy. Sort of going around the coast. Well, we have no explanation other than that we were making it easy for ourselves who we were going to talk yeah. to you next. So, but yeah, I, yeah. We did want to talk to you. Your name was in the very first list. I just, just so you know. That's all right. That's neat. <laughs> I got a twisty rubber arm, so I was easy to convince. <laughs> cool. Um, so I guess, first of all, um, I introduced you by three different names. I, I'm sure you know what those names are. This is a PG thing, eh? Yep. The, oh, the yeah. The JJN. So... You're going to need to um, give an explanation of each one. Um, okay. Probably not your real name, but the other ones. What? How? how? I've never really known. Um, I know Jago, of course, because that's, you know, but. That was, that was my standard four locker. It was written in capital letters, J-A-R-E-D. The E was just really sloppy and had a dash through the middle and looked like a G. And the D was just like an O and then. I think it was Cameron Jones just harassed me into having that as my nickname somehow. So, so it was. Yeah. And, and um, one. yeah. No, he's the problem, the rollerblading related side of things. That was from going on a skate trip over to Ocean Ice and Palmerston and meeting Shane Cowan, who was working there back in the day. Um, him and his brother Adam and a few other skaters, Alfie, Byron Thespin, Nick Marriott. And um, yeah, they invited me to stay for the weekend. And I don't know, they just called me Nui from Whanganui. So it was kind of big. Nui means big. And so it went. I well, didn't know yeah. your name was Jared for like, I'm sure, eight years of knowing you. I just, yeah. all I knew was he was Nui. Yeah, well, I mean, didn't. About yeah. Nui, everyone's well, the competitions, everyone looked to Isaac Rolls for some reason. So it was <laughs> confusing. It was good. Similar, it was... similar size. Um, yeah, and obviously Jared, yeah. But yeah, same for me. I was I, you were just Nui to me for as long as I knew. He Nui. Well, that would have been, I think, well, it all started in 98, and that's really the only year I skated I gave up after that. 
Um, no, actually, no. <laughs> Probably started skating with those Palmerston guys in about 90 or 96, maybe. Huh. And I was actually on the demo team for Ocean and Ice in 98. Yes, claims the fame. Did some jumps over. That was a shop? Yeah. So that was a ski shop. Um, ski blade, wakeboard, just the generic sort of extreme X game style shop. Yeah, blading had the little tiny shelf at the back. It had a big shelf. It had a decent shelf, but it had a big range of stuff. It had, um, pretty much. I remember they had Oxygens, Solomons, K2s, sure. Rosies. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah, lots of stuff. Big, big wall install. It was cool. They had a half pipe out the back, like a little three foot mini. <laughs> it was a good so, time. So, did, so there was no way to say come to Gates and Wanganui? It was just Palmy? Yeah, only Palmy. So, yeah, Palmy or, or, yeah, eventually ordering them overseas. Yeah. Is that, where you, is that where you got your first pair of skates from? First pair, man, it would have been the Fisher Price. They were three wheel extendable things. They were like a teal color, yellow straps, three straps, pink wheels. They had like a like an inside angled thing. So you didn't tilt over when you skated too much. It was weird, like side plates almost. Mm. So those when I was like, Eight year, maybe eight years old, so nineteen ninety. What what did a have, what did a pillow and a belt have to do with your Genesis story in skating? Oh, that was yeah, that was pre that actually. That was um, my friend Nicola. She got roller skates. Oh, she would have been six, maybe. I had a skateboard, a little plastic thing from um toy well, toy world actually orange thing, yellow wheels, and um rode that. My uncle G Man. People know him. Um, he taught me how to skateboard, and then it was about six. Yeah, got on some skates from, yeah, friend around the corner. She gave me a go, and yeah, blasted around the garage, fell over, said I was never going to skate again. I hated it. Oh, that was after I did the Blue Beat roller disco thing or whatever. Wasn't into it. Lasted about two minutes. And then, uh, then blading came out, and it was the, you know, the daughter of the Charlie Brown, whoever she was, did the thing and all the AJ Jackson and stuff where they did the big demo first up and all the mm -hmm. highlights here on Venice Beach. <laughs> it was like the first time I'd seen rollerblading. They had the dude on the rollerblades, the primo guy. In Venice Beach. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with the guitar with the red and the yellow and white circles on it. You He's kind still... of you you kind of know that you're old in skating when um you went to like the disco rinks, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like almost everyone had one in their town that was from our era, I think. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah, and you did the card game where everybody went to the corners and bull rush and stuff. And yeah, man. Yeah, we had like, do you, hey, Neon, do you remember walls and chairs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, what, they had like speed skates and... Walls yeah, and chairs like, was destructive. You had to skate as fast as you could from one side of the rink to the other to get to the place where the wall or get to the place where the chairs were. And you just collide with these barriers at top speed with the people wall was, behind you. The wall yeah. was blocked too, I remember. It yeah. was like a block wall. The we, times. Yeah, we just had, yeah, thick plywood walls and then they were covered in tin for some reason and riveted on, screwed in. So, yeah, when you're playing... <laughs> Anything you just crash into them, rip to bits. No, they... So, whose idea was it for the belt and pillow to act as a crash pad? Oh, probably mum's or something. Safety conscious. I remember it. It was well, your regular pillow, you know. Said pillow, and um, it was a one of those rainbow belts that are all the rage now for your knee pads. Something like that. Had a little clip on the front. Elasticated. Nice. Looking out, looking out for you, eh? It's kind of like it's kind of like Isaac with his with his helmet when he was young. Well, man, those things are sketchy, and they're all like, you know, when you first get K two fatties and your ass over in the shop, like a yeah. Yeah, yeah, like oh, cool. You know the reason why I never got K two fatties in the first place because you could drop me without scraping your toe. The toe, yeah. That was nah. 
not it was weird. I remember when fatties came out and I thought they were real cool because um, a couple of the guys had them in Hamilton. But it was the kind of the first skate that I'd ever ridden where you'd like look down and you couldn't see a wheel. Yeah, it's like wearing gumboots. Yeah, and then they always leaned back. They always felt like you were leaning back a couple of degrees. Yeah, I fell over first time. Oof. Yeah. So um, when did so when did you start like skating, 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 blading, blading? Um, my blading, first blading. pair of skates were a pair of black with kind of like a yellow, kind of like these really Malibus from Kmart when Kmart opened up in Wanganui. We got a mall. Came out <laughs> and rides. so um, had those. Took the stopper off straight away. Wanted to do jumps. Feel like I think two other kids that maybe went. I oh, would have been uh, nine, maybe. Um, there were a couple other kids that, that went to high school that they sort of bladed and could land backwards, but I only saw them. So it was pretty much make it up as you go from there and ended up going to the, yeah, the same roller disco rink thing. They had, well, artistic like figure skating lessons. So I just went to those and mucked around in the background and learned how to cross step and skate backwards and do the mohawk and shoot yeah. the duck. The mohawk. All of that. I think I got level, level two artistic merit patch or whatever you get. So I did figure eights and circles. Shuffle. Nailed it. Um, so obviously, yeah, that was that. And uh, then I went on to speed skating. So I um, got lycra clad and went around in circles a million times real fast for a few years. Um, and then it was probably 90, what would it have been? What skates was I on? Maybe Rosie's Verts, I think, that came with those exact wheels. These are the wheels off them from... Hmm. 90, whatever they came out in. Um, had some of those and then started playing inline. I was like the first person in Wanganui to play inline. Ah. So yeah, got my Milex stick and my ball, little rubbery ball thing that came with them. And I was left-handed, so I had to heat the stick up and bend it around the wrong way and play left-handed and I was good to go after that. So you were actually like in the team? Yeah, Wanganui Lightning. And no, we were the Hurricanes, and then they merged with the Lightning. We had two teams in Wanganui at one stage, yeah. which was pretty cool. Did you and, did you ever play the Devils? Yeah, played the Devils. Yeah, played everyone pretty much. Um, yeah, the Devils, dirty Devils, eh? Yeah, they were the they were the Hamilton team, and like all the badass, like I think like Stacy and Scotty and Sinclair and Brady will were they Devils? No, they were the Rotorua team, and the Rotorua team, were, oh, Vegas, mis, yeah. they were absolute misfits. Eh? They came out, no uniforms, wearing yeah. flannel shirts and bandanas. Uh, and yeah, right. But we, we were so, wow. Everyone was engrossed in ice hockey at the time. It was like the glory, glory days of ice hockey in the 90s, and there were fights galore. This is from the 90s. I got this in. 97, I did a little exchange thing over to Canada and actually got to play ice hockey, which was pretty cool. Um, hurts way more than in line, way more. Um, but yeah, everyone just wanted to, you know, do big hits and skate around a million miles an hour and chuck their gloves off and pretend to get into fights with each other and hold their jerseys and yeah, Wayne's world, everybody. So when did you stop playing hockey? Um, I got... I got on the Lower North Island team. Oh, just before that, I went to Aussie. I just bought, oh, I think they're these wheels. Some Cosmos. One of, there's one of the set of eight. Um, hey, those skates look familiar. Oh, they're your ones then. They were these Joss's. Things. I bought them off Joss and had them for 30 minutes and hated them. So it's all to you. I could give it back to you like that unwanted salad bowl you give to someone at a wedding. <laughs> no, <I'm all> good. <laughs> you really that um, bad? No, nah, I just they didn't fit my feet very well. They were nice skates, but and they look cool. They're awesome. Um, what were we doing? We we're talking about skates. Oh yeah, went to Aussie, came back, thought I was the man. Went to do a five forty off a wedge ramp and cooked it. I did like four fifty, so didn't get that last ninety a.m. And um, yeah, just broke my leg. So that was the end of that. Had a bit of rehab. 
Um, and then, yeah, played on that team. And then pretty much after that, gave up proper competitive hockey when I was maybe 16 or so, and then just played sort of social stuff and did that till I, yeah, till I moved to Auckland. Well, that makes a lot of sense, though, because eh? you've always had a lot of control on your skates um, and your ability to turn sharply and, you know, some of the tricks you used to do relied upon you being a good skater. So it makes sense yeah. that you speed skated and played hockey. Yeah, sort of done it all, really. And, yeah, it helps. I mean, it helps heaps being able to, you know, control what you're doing and, you know, you're learning to move your body with hockey and sharply react to things that might not be there otherwise. And, you know, it's just good all-around skating. You get fit, you get active. Well, all, all the, you know, all the different aspects that I've done. Nice. Um. My video is yeah, freezing up. A little bit glitchy. Oh, yeah. Do you want to hit the red button and we'll figure it out? Yep. Hold on. We'll pause recording. Okay. Um, so you said that you that was the end and that, then you moved to Auckland. And this was like 1997, no. No, no, I, I stopped playing hockey, but I stayed in Wanganui. I moved to Auckland in like 2003 or something. Oh, was it that late? Okay, sweet. Yeah. So you were, so when you were still in Wanganui, like your skating was getting better. You were starting to grind shit and stuff like that, eh? Yeah, we had a bit of a crew. We had quite a few skaters, actually. Myself, John Brock, his little brother Ian Brock, um, Tom Reeford Butler, Matthew Lowry, Blair Wilson... Um, who else? Yeah, there were lots of them, and sort of more so from there as well. That we probably had like 15, wow. 20 people that had probably skate on and off. But yeah, there was a decent amount of people. Hockey was pretty strong in town, so a lot of people played that and then sort of dabbled with ramps and the aggressive side of things too. Was that's, it, was way, more, that's way more than I realised. Yeah. Was the, was the park by the river there then? They had... When I first rolled like when I first got on a ramp, it was a 12-foot vert ramp in the park on the other side of town. Um, I had my $27 warehouse skateboard that had a skull on the bottom of it, had the big fat kick tail. I saved all my money for that and um, couldn't ride it. I'd wa just watched Radical Moves. Have you seen that movie? Good skateboard movie anyway. Thought everything couldn't. And then... Um, yeah, they moved that ramp across to yeah, the park where I think you guys have all seen it, mm. Coa Park now by the river. And it was, yeah, they cut it down to a six foot mini. Um, that's where I went to actually drop in on blades. And then, uh, oh yeah, there was a flood and that floated away. Um, <laughs> they built, um, yeah, they built the new skate park and then there was another flood and some of that floated away. So they it all in. That's it. It's concrete now. Oh, they actually covered when it was wood, put it in like three mil thick stainless steel or like aluminium or something. And someone mm. came and just unscrewed the whole thing and scrapped it. Took oh. them up. <laughs> <laughs> so you come over, you come over the spine ramp to like this nice oof, into your toes. Yeah, sick. So, um. When you so you, yeah, there's actually are there anyone still skating now from there or nah? Um, me, Sam Anderson. Um, Sam Anderson being um, New Zealand's skate sponsor. Yeah, he's sponsoring this video. When you guys cut to break, it goes to him, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's come up three times, eh? <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah so I meet him. Park and he sells me stuff out of the boot of his car. <laughs> so you were getting so you were getting free stuff already in, in Wanganui. Sure. I got a free hoodie. Um, I got to go on road trips and stuff, which was cool. And you know, associate probably yeah, when I started meeting the skate crowd, really, I started going over to Palmerston more and skating the vert and the mini ramp over there, still sort of kind of obsessed with Bert. And um, I remember when Bentley turned up one day, Scott Bentley, and I thought it was him. I'd seen him on that Mountain Joe on the Edge thing. And yeah. I'm like, it's 
him and I like spotted his skates and he wasn't skating. He was on a skateboard and like he was just about to leave after skating for about an hour maybe. And I was like, oh, hey man, are you Scott Bentley? And he's like, yep. I was like, oh, oh, why, why aren't you rollerblading? He's like, rollerblading's easy. Get a skateboard. <laughs> and then just walked off and that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's just hilarious. Just shattered. I always wanted the red argons. And no, I, just, I ended up with K2 fatties after that. Yeah, real role model, way, eh? Bentley. Oxygen <laughs> lost a sale because of Bentley's attitude. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was a jack to me when I first met him as well. So we'll talk to him later and sort that out. Yeah, good. Tell Aaron so- to get the skates back too while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to so, start um, me or something. So did you, um, you, you're talking about traveling to Palmy and, and skating a lot more and skating vert and that. Did, when was your first competition? Um, from an aggressive perspective? Oh, it was the um, Ocean and Ice Blade Comp or whatever it was that I actually won, got first place and best trick. What so, was the um, best trick? Um, it was a cork five. Uh-huh. A so in, in 98. That's pretty epic. That's pretty cool. What was, what was second place, just out oh, of interest? That was, that was off a kicker rank to just flat pavers. Right, yeah. Invert. Yeah. That'll that'll get you on Team Rollerblade, by the way. If there's a car involved, it'd get you on Team yeah. Rollerblade. Yeah. So, I, what? Do, can you remember? Can you remember what the other tricks were? If the if the if first place was a was a flat five. It was a it was a um, split grab three sixty Lucang to mute grab. Oh, double grab! Yeah. Shit. Yeah. One of those, just like Blake Dennis, had just done it in like four in a row magazine. I was like, oh, there we go. One of those. Cool. And what can you remember what you won? I won a Solomon hoodie, or like a baby blue Solomon ST8 hoodie that was like way too small. So like a crop top. Um, I won like a you pair, had one of those. <laughs> I won a pair of, oh, it was either rollerblade, like glove things, like the Creeper gloves, fiddling gloves. Um, like you wear, Joss, and Liam, you wear them. Um, or yeah. the, you know, something like that and some stickers. Um, yeah. But it was around, around that Solomon just coming to market time. Yeah. So then, so, then what, so then what happened? Like, that was your first con. That, did- um, after that, um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the Oriental markets or whatever they were up in Auckland, I went up to a couple of those. I always seem to have tonsillitis or like glandular fever or something. And yeah, oh, that's right. My first run, um, Ben Horgan, he was on the microphone. He pointed out how he's doing all the Oriental Market stuff. But yeah, I missed a Mizu, my first trick. Super nervous, never skated in front of that many people before. And Ben's just like, oh, there he is, missing one of the easier grinds, the Mizu. Oh. Uh, anyway, we're mates now, so that's all right. I'm gonna see him on the weekend. Sort him out. Forty. That was um. Was that the that was the Oriental where they had the the rail that was like flat up across and then down two kinks? Is that right? That's the one. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Tim, Tim was Tim was an under sixteen for that. Mm. Yeah. Still smashed Kevin Batten. Ah. Oh. Wow. I remember Kev from that. He had the big, big, big effort. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Good, good backslide. He did. I wonder yeah. if Michael Farr ever beat uh, Tim. I don't think he did. Oh, I don't know. Maybe at life. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a random question, but when and what was Triforce? Triforce. Oh, where's Gibby? He just left. He could have done the whole thing. He had like the hand actions and was right into it. That was my um, seventh form. Oh, it was like how it started. There were five of us that always skated, and then like two of two of them obviously pissed me off at some stage. So I was like, "Haha, it's just us three, Triforce." <laughs> and, <laughs> And then I had a like a seven form graphics project, so I made logos, and it was pretty much like a rip off of like the Senate 
basically like a rip off of that thing. Yeah. So that was cool at the time. And um, yeah, t-shirts, packaging, you know, Adobe Photoshop and Corral. And yeah, I ended up, what did I do? Took electrical tape to the bonnet of my car and taped the logo on. Obviously completely stuffed the bonnet. But um, look, all for like New Year at the Mount, wherever we were, Fong Matar at Tim's house or something. <laughs> <laughs> on the top deck, watching the balconies flex with all the people leaning against the glass railing. Yeah. And, and what, in that era, what was your largest size track pant? Oh, probably the ones I made. What, um, were they 7XL or? Well, they tapered. The waist was pretty normal, right? But to get the size of, like, the crutch drop versus knee width, tapering to the top of the boot so it didn't overhang mm. there are heaps of triangular like angles going on but yeah they're basically wide pants like that they're huge they're massive i made jeans i made cav for gong gong um i can't say his last name um made him some huge runs for his birthday uh, they were triforce had it embroidered in the league wow good. pretty good at sewing so you, um, so Jared, like you, you travelled from Whanganui up to the to the nationals the first time. Yeah, yeah. And then Mom drove me up. And so when did you act? When did tell me again? When did you actually move up to Auckland? Oh, two thousand and three, when I started my um, jewellery training. Right. My... No. Yeah. So two thousand and three is when I set foot in Auckland. That was a pretty funny day. Tell us about the day. Oh, well, ma'am. Some of you lot invited me to come rollerblading, and my other mate, Nathan Whitaker, um, he'd moved up to Auckland as well. He'd just started his acting career as an actor. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we got invited rollerblading, and we met um, Pink Lace, of all people, Alex Alders, and Pink Lace's dad, Charlie. He, um, had something to do with the big day out and he's like oh hey Nui do you want a free ticket to big day out and I was like yep yeah. and he's like have another one be a friend yeah thank you so off we went to big day out and um so that was my grand introduction to Auckland um which was great got to skate the big vert ramp which consisted of oh, I think climbing to the top dropping in getting a free t-shirt on one side getting a v skating back and, that, <laughs> and yeah, primo. Got to watch all the bands from up the top. Um, Herbal party highs. It was a funny time. Aaron Herbal Taylor highs. Herbal highs. Yeah. I mean, Jane's addiction. Telling me Perry Farrell was his god. Oh, Aaron Taylor. And and so you mentioned traveling up to Auckland to to do your jewelry thing. What drew you to jewelry? It's quite an obscure career, I guess, for someone from Wanganui. Um, just assuming that. But. Yeah, it's probably a bit different to what you'd normally do. I started off doing computer graphics and just got sick of sort of doing this and not having any physicality really at the time. You know, there wasn't 3D printing or anything really. So mm. all I could foresee that was a, just a flat image or something computer that wasn't like a tangible physical thing so I um, bailed on the computer graphics about halfway through the first year um, and then yeah decided I was going to go to Auckland and become a goldsmith and there was a course starting and the guy teaching it Peter Minturn was a reputable jeweler goldsmith you know been around for ages so yeah jump on the opportunity and did that so were you um were you were you as much into skating then as you were into your study and that, or were you, was it equal, or was it just just another hobby? Well, the, I mean, the skating was cool. Um, it was around the XC era, and I skated in I think the first Hamilton one, or I got to go to it. Um, you know, just be around everybody and sort of meet. Well, everybody really, mm. and. Um, the one after that, I think I either skated in. Yeah, that was the one in Hamilton when my car got nicked. Shot Hamilton. Yeah. Um, 
And Mike Farr's mum's car got nicked too. So my, too my car got stolen at that one too. It, that one yeah. at Portland Showgrounds. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Josh, Josh, you could start your car with a 10 cent coin. So yours wasn't that hard to steal. Me and, that, Rob, me and Rob Ting had like all this gear in it. This is kind of a side story, but we had all this gear in it. We came out of the comp. We looked for the car and we're like, it's gone. And then, so it sucked. We, we were like, well, we had CDs, we had like money, skates, yeah. skateboards, all kinds of gear. And then, what do we what do we do? We reported it stolen, and they found it halfway to Raglan. They found it. Oh, no, that was a different car. They found it up on blocks with like nothing left in it. We lost so much cool stuff. It really yeah. sucked. Same thing. I yeah, rollerblades. I had a BMX friend with me. All his wheel sets. All his, yeah. All our- I, was, I, I just finished skating qualifying or something, so I was all buggered and hot and sweaty. And yeah, no clothes, like nothing. <laughs> so Michael Farr generously gave me like the last unworn clothes off his back, and that was me for the weekend. Nice plaid shirt, bit of an open collar, nice red t shirt underneath. Pant, with- pants that actually fit you. That's cool. Yeah, stuff like that. Because cool. you were quite young. Uh, that was the first time I think I met you. But how did you cope being young, getting your car stolen when you're seven hours from home? Oh, was it the loaded hog or the outback? <laughs> That's how you coped. <laughs> oh, I mean, pretty much. Um, oh, you know, it was sort of wild times, uh, carefree. You know, we all had a wristband, so that was pretty cool. We all hopped yeah. up Red Bull. Um, you know, we had mini bars and free hotel rooms, unless Isaac Rolls' brother nipped all the little tequilas out of them. Oh, that was mm-hmm. um, so. Yeah. Did you, um, wasn't too like, late. Is our video jamming up again? Uh, you're no. on slightly, but it's, it's coming right now. Okay, um, I was gonna ask, like, did, do you what was what was did, did you feel very driven? while you were skating, you know, because like you always seemed like a bit of a cruiser. You kind of like, you were really, really good. But I just wonder like, did you, did you feel like you pushed yourself like some other people Not, seem to skate? I didn't, I didn't have that sort of pit bull mentality or, you know, I was out of under 16. So, you know, that was it. Um, yeah. yeah, I was just sort of cruising, not cruising, but I enjoyed the way I skated and whether or not that was what was going to win at the end of the day. I wasn't really there to compete. I was just there to hang out with everyone, really. Um, yeah. I couldn't care less if I didn't put a pair of skates on. It was more just the social aspect of being, you know, part of that thing at the time. And it was big and flashy and, you know, they're all the pros from the X Games that you'd never seen before other than on TV. So, you know, yeah. it was pretty yeah, you, you know, sort of, in, in a way, just. Oh, you've Joss. died. Joss is gone. Oh, Joss. Oh, pause us for one second, people. What were we talking So we were just talking about X and Nui. Yes. Um, and so I've got two quick questions to ask you. So how did you end up in a fox suit at Exia? Oh, well, I don't know who asked me to do that. Um, I got in the fox suit, blasted around the head. Like, I, what did I do? I tried to 360, like get 360 the box or whatever, and the head just stayed still, and I went around. So landed and just had nothing to look at. Um, yeah. And the, I think I hit the big the massive big wall ride thing and just did a big fly splat on that and then came out fakey and then Brooke was on the mic and he lost it at me and told me to get off so that was the end of my fun <laughs> and when you crashed doing your 360 did you wear on the, the fox suit no nah, probably a few 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 like plasticky burns from the the faux fur but other than that it'd be pretty manky the, though like there was a few people that wore it for you I think Oh, I just remember I was out in the car park with Hamish prior to that. We came back in, someone talked me into wearing a box suit. We're all dr- I was drinking Red Bull, oh, red wine out of a Red Bull can. 
Um, so it was all pretty pear-shaped to start with. Um, again, rubbery arm, twisted, yeah. He's in there, Fox <laughs> Sending it to Yeah, that thing must have been really sweaty because I remember that Jordan comp was indoors and it was hot yeah. and yeah, I remember you you were doing some massive jumps in that thing. It was pretty terrifying. I, I also wore the Eagle Boys suit, the Eagle Boys Eagle, another <laughs> comp thing. Um, yeah, I was always up for a suit. You, you're <laughs> you're suit. like team rollerblade material all over. You'd wear yeah. a suit and you could do a bio five. I just need a cape. <laughs> You'd be away. Aaron Taylor, hook him yeah. up. Uh, wearing, a, wearing a costume is way less slutty than the flips over a van and demos in a, in a car park thing. So the ones that freak me is when they do the Baranis and everyone's like, ah, and then there's some like creep doing a flip, just like looking down on them about this far above them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, while we're on the XE train, what was your favorite XE memory? Oh. Apart from my flatmate at the time. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, there was all sorts of things that happened at X Air. Um, I remember, oh, yeah, the fire hose and the hall incident. Um, the other time Ben got stuck on the carpet at the bank. Um, what? what a, ben got stuck on the carpet at no. the bank? Oh, yeah, that's another story. Have you guys got like a Patreon one that you tell the other stories on? Nah, we're just all in. Yeah, oh, we okay. need to know the we need to know the Ben story now, please. Yeah. Oh, it's just no, nah, there was just a pattern on the carpet and he got a bit entranced with it. And he uh -huh. took Yeah, I got stuck in Subway and it was around the time you fell down the lamppost out the window. Oh, yeah. that was Wellington. Was it did he have peyote? was it peyote or whatever it was? The cactus juice? Is that what that was? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> God. Um, um, funny. Oh, there was huh? lots of um, people getting buckets of ice chucked on them. Um, the rollerbladers helping the coolest people there. Uh, <laughs> it was all go. Rollerblading was the thing. I remember a big, I remember a, like a big fight between like skaters, like us and the BMXs too. And the BMXs, yeah, those twins. The twins. Yeah, who's that for their roommate? And Danny, Danny was in there. Um, that, yeah, it was, you know, we all had hotel rooms and they all joined doors and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, people were sharing rooms to just, you know, save money. So it was like, you know, everyone was packed into rooms. It was just chaos. We're all it just reminded me of something to ask um, Bentley when we, when we talked to him. So thanks for that. So um, while you, I did want to just get you to explain really quickly for those people that don't know, even though it's going to embarrass the shit out of me, but why did you have a clipboard? Oh, the clipboard. At the beginning of the show. <laughs> the clipboard. Oh, because we were, what were we doing? We were judging X here, me, you, Ben, I think. Who else? I think it's you? just you, me, and Ben. Maybe Shiloh, Shiloh or Ricardo or something like that. Anyway, it was like a jam format. <laughs> for a half an hour or however long it was and everybody was a bit puffed and no one was really doing anything and Neam's up there next to me looks over and he's like should I do a crowd pleaser go on Neam do it oh. off he goes Clip did you have the clipboard for that one yeah no yeah. I landed I landed my first crowd pleaser it was just a straight back flip with the clipboard yeah that was it and then the next one went totally tits up in front of like 1200 people pretty much like silent and then there you are just half back flip to like full back land massive wwf like yeah. bounce off the mat um it was a lot now too and then you just sort of piddle down the down bit <laughs> and sculpt away that was that stupid BMX uh, fun box, that massive kicker, and I'd actually never been off it before. And I thought, no. I know what I'll do. I used to flat five pretty easily. I'll give that a go. Nah, nah. Like tra trampoline blading. It's like that. And, you just... and I Mind never you. actually told anyone about the, I'll do a crowd pleaser, but everyone somehow knows. And you were the only one I told. <laughs> yeah, I told everyone. There was always an opportunity for Neam to throw a 
crowd pleaser. And even if there wasn't a crowd, sorry, you know. It's the Pooh Kitty powerhouse. Yeah, hard out. It's like the equivalent of do a kickflip. It was like, do a backflip, Neam. Crowd pleaser. Land in the flat bottom, Neam. Chuck a Liu Kang in it. Do yeah. eight, eight foot above the coping. Um, so who, uh, who did you live? Who did you live with in Auckland when you moved up? Um, my mate Nathan. Um, that was yeah when I was in Kingsland. That was that fateful twenty first that everybody, most people, in the Auckland rollerblading fraternity attended. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Aaron Taylor was making Tahiti drink for everybody. Um, Gary Mimas was there. Um, who else? There was a lot. Brooke turned up. Um, Neam, you got your car toilet papered. Um, Johnny spit on the floor and over my brand new hand seat. Um, your was hand seat was awesome. The what? Your hand seat. Oh, yeah. yeah. The one, I got that whole photo of Ronan on. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I had to take the spinning function off it because everyone just got too ape shit on it. Mm. And <laughs> you and Johnny, a big Pyrex bowl full of predominantly rum. What else do I have? Vodka and, you know, your plethora of booze. And then a, just a little bit of orange juice. And Aaron Taylor was quite forceful that Johnny was going to be drinking this. And so he did. And then someone spun him around. Was that also the night that there was a, was that the, one of the video premieres of one of Isaac's videos at your place? Or was that another night? Because Brooke was there for that other one. Or was it Happy Productions? I remember when Marlon and um, old Paps, whatever his name is, came. Yeah, it might have been for Chances or yeah. Listen, listen With Your Knees or something. I or remember one of them. Every time you mention Nathan's name, I just think about the way that he wipes his ass. Why oh, yeah. That? What? <laughs> That's the it, it, yeah. It, yeah, because he goes the wrong way. He goes from back to front. Anyway, sorry, very random. Is, is, that, the, yeah, is, is be, that the wrong way? You'll be trying yeah, to pin It's the, the wrong front. way. <laughs> you, don't, you don't wipe towards your gooch. You go like... <laughs> I'm, I'm proud to say I still do it both ways. Sorry. Yeah, just um, go from one thigh to the other thigh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've lowered the tone of this podcast. I apologize. Well, so, um, what, um, did, hold on. Was there a time that you started to. Um... I, need to I need to just say, Nam, I didn't shit on your car. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that too. Uh, you were going to ask about that. That was Maybe. further down the list in terms of those questions, but thank you. We for thought it. we were going to get an answer, so there you go. I've, I've, I've tried to pry. Um, I've emailed people. No one's coming up with facts. I'm going to keep Don't pushing. your name. That, that's the entire purpose of this podcast is to find out I, who did it. I haven't got it in me to do that. Sorry, Joss, you uh, answer, ask your next, next one. I've completely lost my train of thought now. So that's just derailed everything. I'm going to have to vape now. Um, and what was I going to ask you? Got away with um, it. So did you start to fade out of skating um, at any stage? Oh, when I could drink, basically. Um, I wasn't much of a drinker or anything at school and was anti pretty much everything. And then, you know, the freedom of moving out of home and you know, X year, it was all free. Um, again, Brooke had Pony Club at the time. So, you know, it was pretty cool times down there and lots of late nights and early yeah. morning, that type yeah. of stuff. So, um, yeah, it turned, you know, more from the skating and then, you know, I physically, you know, lost the fitness and, you know, I was under the idea that, hey, I could go out and fraternize all night and sling a few business cards and, well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm doing business stuff. But it yeah. just, yeah, no, nah, it wasn't the best idea for, for my rollerblading passion. Yeah, th- things did get pretty gnarly in terms of, like, party time for a while there. Yeah. yeah, it was, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's only, 
shit for me stopped three years ago. So yeah. Um, I thought you were going to do a slow clap for being sober for three years, but no, go on. <laughs> I'll do that for you, though, Louis. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So um, is it, has that led back to more skating now? Like, what are you doing now? Oh, yeah, I skate all the time now. So it was pretty much when um, the big hoax, hoax nine or whatever we are now, COVID, um, when that started, um, Slug Lord challenged me to one of those, like, 10 push-up things. And I could barely do it. And I just sort of told myself that I'm going to do these push-ups and I'm going to stop, you know, eating crap. And off I went. I'd already bought I'd already bought these skates while I was still drinking under, you know, with the promise of myself that I was going to sort my shit out and get on them. And so I have. Cool. That's really good. So what do you so what is it what is a day skating to you now? Um it's normally standing in the car park with Sam Anderson at the Castle Cliff skate park, um oogling all his new new wares that he's bought um to on sell at a loss, um complain about life for a bit and then have a blade, rip it up, maybe get a clip or two. Yeah. Um and that's maybe a good 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But now on Thursdays, um, Thursdays I've joined up with the local West Coast Bombers Derby crew um, and go on little fitness blades, which is cool. Bomb some hills, do some turns. Yeah. Powerful strides. Rollerblading. Yeah, blading. Sick. So you do you travel to spots or anything or...? No, we just, well, well, yeah, I mean, like, cruise around, like, for the little Thursday night skating things, just cruising around town, you know, jumping curbs and shooting the breeze. But, yeah, we, you know, I'll drive around to other skate parks. Martin's pretty close. Um, Fielding's close-ish. Um, Palmerston's cold. Um, so, yeah, I got on little missions. Went over to Nate the other day. Go up and see Horgan now and then. Shred the ball. Um, Liam, should we? Uh, do you want? Have you got something to show us? Oh, I, I think I do. Let me just figure out how I can bring it up on screen. Oh, is it my blue shirt? My best blue um, shirt. Let me just figure this out one second. Oh shit. The only fans name. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's my only fans name. And you're my only fan. Oh, this one. So I've, we've actually got, we want to ask you a few questions and get you to explain kind of some key pictures that we could find of you. Oh, yeah. Um, so why do you have tape on your face? That was Christmas in the park. Um, um, no, it was Christmas in the park night, and um, we were at Daisuke Segura, um, Kiwi Samurai Gangster, why you know where, um, his apartment in the middle of the city, and um, I had tape on my face just for fun. I actually saw it on What Now, um, and I did what they did on TV. I yeah, didn't just do half of that, but I fully, yeah. And I was on Drinking Bernardino. I think we had absent that night. Danny and then decided to write his name in a bar on it and lit it on fire and just melted all the shot glasses, lots of fire. And then we left. And um, that was that same fateful night that you kicked over all the boxes, Nam. What a surprise. Oh, we what were a surprise. dying place. I remember that. That was a, that was a hectic night because I think we'd left his apartment. We'd gone into town. I remember... Yep. Johnny Jensen and I think Danny Jensen um, and we somehow talked our way into getting on that sky bungee thing yeah in the middle of the city so anyway I did it I did it in undies with I did it I did it nearly nude with sack mm. oh oh it must have been around the same time because we did it in our underwear as well except just you yeah. know when just starting to get you to take off yeah and then 
down and Aaron Taylor's got all of our clothes running off. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I was stumbling along at the time. Remember getting back into the elevator, getting up to about the third floor. I think Di lives on the fourth floor. The doors opened. I think someone down trailed me and pushed me into the hallway. Um, and then, yeah, that was that. You kicked boxes at some point. And that was a fantastic time. So that's the tape night. Nice. Good photo. Oh, jumping. Yeah, so 540 has been brought it up, um, especially the kind of court one you did was kind of your specialty, like everyone knew you. That's off the that's off the nipple there, eh? That is off the nipple to flat girl. Hold on, I just gotta fiddle my thing. My back, I'm back. Um yeah, off that nipple, oh, off the whatever here. Danny's on the nipple, so I'm just sort of off the little hippie bit. Um, and yeah, Tim took that photo, Tim being weird. Um, and I landed it. It's worth noting that you're traveling back down in that photo. You used to go pretty high off that thing. Mm. Yeah, that was that was quite fun. I used to try and gap from there across into the, like right across into the other in quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Of this little four foot quarter. That's that was your park, Jim eh? Morrison. That was definitely your Jim Morrison era too, with the oh, open collared shirt and the bandana. Yeah, I don't know who I was trying to be that day. Um, yeah, costumes though. Yeah, I mean, you, can't, you know, back then you'd say you can't get any more embarrassing than being on rollerblades. So, dress like a dickhead. Um, the next one wanted to ask you about oh this one you got smoked on that rail that day remember that i did yeah yeah the yeah. other ribs i wanted what? to ask it why were you doing a no-handed gumby why were we why were we doing that and why why is ben doing a handstand yeah i don't know we were just what? it was it was a father's day and we were thinking of doing something stupid and i think we skated otara before then and heather took the photo oh really you are you holding something? I remember I'm, that. I'm holding the tree and then holding Ben's ankle because he couldn't hold his handstand. That's no, right. but is Nui, are you holding something? Um, nah, just just claw hands. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, it's <laughs> a cool photo. Um, one take, he, got it in one go. Oh yes, the um the spacey. Yeah, yeah, so you built these for a while, didn't you? I just bought scooters and well, I only had two scooters, but yeah, I just bought stuff and painted like because I was hanging out with Grant Walker, GT refinishes. Um, yeah, I was always around him painting stuff and, you know, I wanted to change the colour of it. So painted it and rode it around. It was pretty loud. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That was the Metro magazine from back in the day. Well, that was in Metro magazine, that photo. Uh, well, that was from the photo shoot. They were doing an article on, like, scooter people in Auckland. And there was oh. a whole bunch that honed around. Immortalized. That was definitely your era where you were really into David Bain jumpers, too. Oh, yeah. Bain. Yeah, Save Mark Wanganui was the yeah. trick of David Bain-esque um, attire. <laughs> Either that or like a used patch. Um, next one has a few few stories. You got into fixed gear bikes in a big way. That's right. Devon, um, Devonport on a GoPro. That was about two minutes before my GoPro fell off the tripod back in the era of the big fisheye lens on them. And end of fisheye. I was trying to figure out where that was. That Devo. Yeah, Devo of that little, the little box thing. Huh. So what um, got you into fixed gear bikes and what got you out of fixed gear bikes? Oh, no, I'm still on the fixed gear. Yeah, <laughs> it's still on the, yeah. Um, strapped in, no brakes. I don't know, it's a good, it was sort of the new thing at the time and I'd sort of lost, you know, lost my passion, lost my ability in skating, say. And um, that was, I don't know, a fun way to get around. It was something that I could tinker with. And um, yeah, it was just, you know, a sort of another form of 
you know, taking your mind away from whatever it is and going mm. fun, being reckless. And, you know, I sort of wonder every time I get on it, how many people come close to death every day? Like, how many people do sketchy stuff enough to almost die? Like, whether it be cars or jumping off stuff or, you know. Like, how many near misses are there in the world? Yeah, like, how many people, like, get up in the morning and they do something that they know is going to be pretty on the edge of dangerous? Yeah, not less than you, less than you yeah, think of it, I guess. It depends how many team rollerblade shows are happening around the world at any one time. Whether, well, you, I mean, whether you touched white, whether you saw an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just one of, again, sort of one of those fear thrill factor things. But yeah, riding a fixed gear is a massive mental game as much as it is, you know, a physical thing. Just timing everything. You're listening constantly. Like, is a car coming? You know, you know your eyes are open. You're looking out the side of your peripheral vision every, you know, all the time. It's just you can't, you can relax, but yeah, you always have to be thinking of what's going on because you will literally die if you get it wrong. Well, I can't, I can't imagine that you have to be like that riding a bike in Auckland Metro anyway. So you're strapped to it. It's got one gear. If you pedal it forwards, it goes forwards. If you pedal it backwards, it goes backwards. There's zero coasting. Your feet are strapped to the pedals. Hmm. And you the had a for, decent, the recipe for disaster. And yeah. you had a decent crash. Yeah, as Tol as say. yeah, Toll Street Bowl doing that gap that you know I think you've seen multiple people, Danny do it, Jamie Nicholson do it, mm. Johnny do it. But yeah, I did it on that. Um, and uh, yeah, I came up like the tiniest bit short, back wheel hit the concrete, bucked oh. me up. I landed on my foot, which broke. I landed on my wrist, which broke, and then landed on my elbow, that broke in two places. Great. And then, then I had to walk home around the corner, and then, yeah, um, took some herbal panadol and um, walked myself up to A and E that had just closed three minutes before I got there, and then had to taxi to A and E in the middle of well, you know, accident emergency at the hospital, and then mm. that was seven days getting screwed back together. So, is it your worst? Is have your worst crash has been on bikes rather than skates? Yeah, of well, yeah, physically, the most damage done in one go was yeah, breaking my Les Frank bone in my foot, yeah, cracking my wrist, and then yeah, broke it twice, got ten pins in my elbow, something else. Um, but skating, I, I got away pretty easy. I hurt my knee when I was pretty young, but that came right. Um, hurt my wrists, but they sort of came right. Um, and yeah, my ankle, I broke that when I was 15, 14, 15. And that's really the most major thing that I've had skating wise. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. Always um, been pretty favorite, favorite skate spots in New Zealand. Favorite skate spots. Um, yeah. I like skating big bowls. I like pumping around stuff and not pushing. Like, like pushing has its place, but I like the idea of, you know, you should flow like smoke in the air. Like there should be nothing sharp or hard. It should all be you know, like a ribbon in the breeze. Um, yeah, just fluid. Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah, just fluid and smooth so um i'd say oh i liked melville back in the day that was pretty mm. scary like mm. the big um I, I haven't skated it oh my camera's doing something funny um i haven't skated it since it's been done up neither have yeah. i um oh it's pretty I, epic now some of the times that i probably cherish most was when I moved to Auckland and ran into Ben. And I remember running into him well, in 19, maybe 98. Um, around then at the Taupo mini ramp, um, the one by McDonald's that everyone seems to remember. Um, and then I moved to Auckland and I sort of looked at him at Cheapskates and I was like, you didn't happen to 
you're not from, did you skate in Taupo? And he's like, yeah, man. I'm like, oh, yeah. you didn't have Bauer, Bauer respects the green ones. He's like, yeah, man. I was like, you didn't do this trick this one way. He's like, yeah, man. I was like, oh, you're the dude. Yeah, let's <laughs> So yeah, we used to go skating at Glen Dowie by his grandma's place um, late at night after he'd finished at Cheap Skates. Um, that's when the yeah, I guess the little jump crew started, and yeah, we little late night missions, and we'd end up yeah all over the show. Main Glen Dowie, that was a cool little park. It was nice and new and smooth. Melville, oh not Melville, what's the other one? Melbourne on the other side. Mm. When you moved yeah, Melbourne is So during yeah. during that Glen Dowie time. What did Joe wax of yours? Oh, not the coping. Um, my chest. Why? Well, <laughs> I don't particularly know at the time, but Ben got his chest waxed as well. And their flatmate, Ange, she had, I think, like an armful of gear and something and just sort of like, burst open the door after she heard these horrific male shrieks and there was Joe with like two wax strips in her hand on her back like kicking her legs laughing and there's just me and Ben like an absolute like, <laughs> pain, like the worst pain and that was us getting our chest I don't even know why we did it I don't know we're on St. Helier's so I'm not surprised Joe was behind that. Instigating. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, twinkle toes. Um, so your desert island question is um, glass or metal? Uh, probably glass. That's your new thing? Yeah. Well, I've always wanted to do it and I don't know, there wasn't really, there's not that, like there's soft glass, which is like the big kiln stuff where they had the big stick and blow the thing and blah, blah, blah. That's one side of glass. I, I'm doing the borosilicate stuff, which is more like the scientific, like Pyrex, so high temperature. Mm -hmm. You can weld parts together more, you can fabricate things more with it. it has um, higher tolerances of heat and you can manipulate it more um so yeah basically functional glass so you know glasses big bowls stuff that you'd use every day and you know wouldn't oh. be put down and break so are you, sell are you are you selling stuff oh i've literally like maybe done it for 10 hours 12 hours like three little oxygen bottles worth of making time so each one of those bottles is maybe three hours four hours if you're lucky so that's me that's my glass career so far cool um but yeah into it it's fun it's i can understand it from having a, a metal background and it's quite neat knowing sort of the metal properties and how you can incorporate them all around sort of the same temperature in the glass in different ways but you're but you're making your money with with still with steel jewelry, metal jewelry, aren't you? Yeah, uh, I mean, predominantly, yeah, the jewelry side of things. But I'm doing all sorts of stuff. I got into three D printing for a bit, so I was doing rapid prototyping for like another friend who works in motorsport, and um, that was quite fun. Um, woodworking. I mean, I've done all sorts of do all sorts of things really. If there's a YouTube tutorial for it. I'm in there and yeah, boots and all, I'll make you one. So going cool. back to the jewelry piece, like what's your favorite piece of jewelry you've made? And then have you ever been commissioned by someone high profile to make a piece? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was pretty fortunate with my flatmates. They were always sort of in a sort of celebrity, music-y, TV-ish, entertainment background so I had a lot of you know a lot of jobs through there um probably not so much the artists themselves but a lot of the managers and the people in the background and um oh Carly Binding from True Bliss and Matthew Ridge um 
I don't know, I did stuff for Brooke as well. Um, yeah. Done pieces for, yeah, piece for Amber and whatnot. Um, I was actually going to ask you a favourite Reggie Vic Park story. Because no one oh, really knows that he was a BMX or at Vic Park with us. Yeah, he was hectic on the BMX. Um, yeah, Reggie. Yeah, nah. Um, yeah, he just hung out at Vic Park and did air skids and whatnot. I don't know what the BMX tricks are. And I don't know, I saw him down at Pony Club heaps trying to get his bike down the stairs. <laughs> Were you there that day that Mark Ellis trying to jump jump the jump box with um, a suit on? Nah, nah, I wasn't. I always wanted to find out what the story was with that. Nah, nah, I never wasn't. I didn't really skate, but I skated it a bit. But man, I was patchy. Like not, you know, it wasn't my focus. And if I went out to skate, it was again, it was a social thing, and it normally drinking and the. Yeah, you you did have a lot of um, like C slide combos on the mini though. Oh, you like those, eh? Yeah, you would. Yeah. You used to do like uh, backslide backslide C slides to Marchio stalls, and then fast slide C slides to stalls and hop back in, and you used to do all sorts of combinations of that creative type stuff. Yeah, I was, oh, I was probably yeah a rock kicker before my time. Before it's time, whatever the saying is, I don't know. I look at a lot of the stuff these days, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, done that." That was that was like 1996 when you're mucking around and you're, you know, your friends mm. are like, you're and say you're a pansy for doing heel rolls and you know that stuff that's trendy now. Yeah, I thought I thought you kind of started the whole like slide on the platform to the wall of the mini and then jump all the way back in. Yeah, I was doing those. Yeah, little hand plants, just slidey, kickety, you know, near yeah. and rocks and just that that type of who did it? Sort of Sagona style mm. and you know, fast clickety clack stuff. Um, I don't know, I like Frankie style, how it was, I don't know, the whippy spins and but yeah, who else? Nick Riggle, he was cool, he was a cool ball skater. Um, but yeah, lots of that sort of tippity tap stuff that you wouldn't get away with back in the day because it wasn't a big hammer and it just wasn't really understood as a skating, an aspect of aggressive skating. It was, like, it was pretty cool though, the stuff that you could do and the stuff that you would look for. Like I remember when we went to Hamilton that time at, at to the uni and you were rolling up a rock and jumping a gap off a rock like a launch ramp, like it was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Again, I suppose with the background of sort of being able to skate most stuff, it was really just eye it up and you know, you've got the skill to somewhat land on your feet, hopefully. And unless you do half a backflip, it should be good. Yeah, I kind of thought just the fact that you were doing that stuff just showed that you're just really in genuinely enjoying what you were doing. Kind of like how we talked to Ben about he wasn't always trying like the most technically challenging stuff, but he was clearly enjoying himself. Same for you, you know, all the time. Like I, I can hands down say, like I can barely royale. Like I can do them, but if you say do it on the ledge, I wouldn't do it or like jump onto a handrail and do a royale, no. Mm. But uh, pretty much anything else as a trick on coping, I'd give it a whirl. Yeah. Um, I remember you switch soling a 14 stair wall rail once in the uni. Did I? Oh, yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> you spun out of it too. Oh, well, that sounds about right. Um, no, I'm a bit like that. Like my street street soles on my right foot, but anything on like a mini ramp or transition, my sole foot's my left foot. Huh. Except top sole on a mini ramp and top sole normally with my right foot, but I'll only do foot forward tricks with left foot. So like spin to do you spin to the right or do you spin to the left? I spin to the right going forwards, but I spin to the left if I'm going fakey. <laughs> See, you guys that would do that, I was always jealous of because I find I always found switch spins real hard, but I kind of thought you guys that would do it one way forwards, one way backwards, because I think you, Josh, were the same. It almost had right. like a... Fakey, spun to the left, forward, spun to the... 
to the left. I thought you were to the right, but I always thought those guys that would do it one way forwards, one way fakie almost were cheating because they had a, a step up. They were better than us to try and switch pins because they'd already been well, able to do it. A fakie, well, a fakie 360 isn't really all that much when you sort of, when you actually do it and break it down. You just keep looking at the same thing and you go, whoop, oh yeah, I'm yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, now, like I can spin both ways. I wouldn't say I could do 900s both ways. Or anything, but I used to be able to do 900s. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like switch 360s, and I don't know, I don't really know which way I spin now backwards, but off huh. I go. Zero spins, just zero spin. Thank you, zero yeah. spin everything. Honestly, yeah. it looks cool. One yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Um, Joss, are you okay if I bring in a couple of guest questions as we? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, all, I'm all out, so. Cool. So um, just going through what we've had on Instagram and Facebook, mm. um, just asking a couple of those. Um, so Kerry asked about what the scene was like in Wanganui growing up, but we've kind of answered that with the amount of people that were there, which was quite cool. Which um, lots, by the way. There's lots of people. A lot more than I thought. Um, Sam Anderson wants to know how many kids you've got floating around in Wanganui. Um, well... None that I know of. How many's he got? Oh, he's got lots of skate children around the country, but I don't know about how many kids. Is he going to sell them out of the boot of his car? <laughs> At the skate park? <laughs> Tim will be in there. Um, ben wants to know when you first started doing your cork spins. Cork spins, that was... 98. Um, it was... A... Yeah, it was around then. I was doing them because I do. I wouldn't do a cork. I'd literally go up and somehow like turn myself one eighty, and then sort of do a front flip, and yeah. then that that was sort of one iteration of it. And the other one was like the flicky, flicky Bobby Spazloid um, style, Frankie Morales style, not mm. Bobby Spazloid. Um, so, yeah, that was sort of the start of it. And then, I don't know, just sort of, work, you know, you learn all your grabs and off you go. And that's it. I did one the other day for the first time in, like, that Napier thing yeah. that you got the promo off. That was, the, like, the first time that I'd done it over, a, like, a big ramp, literally since probably 90, or oh, maybe 2000. Uh, scary. So 22 years later nearing 40 dead sober on giant super fast wheels <laughs> wearing a helmet M mildly out of practice well you know it was the you know the, you've done it enough as a kid and it's like i don't know like anything jumping on your bike you jump on and off you go and mm. cross your fingers mm -hmm. still so, got um, it you must still have it you, you've still got it somewhere yeah yeah, definitely got it. <laughs> I've seen clips of you. No, he's still got tricks. He can still hang. Yeah, I've still got it. I can still, yeah, I can still get low. Um, so Thomas, is, Tom, uh, Thomas, I can't pronounce your last name. Um, he wants to ask a question around your skate modding because you actually started a, a little business making and printing product for people around the world, eh? Oh, yeah. I was doing, yeah, these on the, more around it, you see it. These, the sole place that everyone wants for their Aeons. So, um, yeah, it's ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or or whatever you pronounce it as. <laughs> um, and 3D, literally, a skate on the side of the table on a piece of paper, trace around the outside, drew it up on the computer, 3D printed a template, and you trace around the template with a table router. <laughs> Then you've got those. Oh, and, and on that, I've got this set that doesn't have an owner, so I'll give this away to somebody tonight on this thing. Just you guys have to make a question or something for someone to ask. And can you choose? Okay. Can you read? Can you read the comments in like a week's time? And can you just choose someone? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's that. It's all the hardware, everything ready to go. I think their size. 
10, 9, 10 maybe. They don't look big enough. Oh, oh our first giveaway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, this, is, this is a great day. This, this is actually like a proper thing now. We have a giveaway. Yeah. And are you gonna are you gonna box up that raspberry slice and send that to me? Yeah, I was gonna say I'll send it up to you if you like. That You've got a my, credit card uh, waiting. That was my 30th birthday present. Look, he's even come there with one. Oh <laughs> look, Nian's dribbling a little bit. Um so what was the name of your company that you started making those skate parts, Nilly? Oh, um Splash Racks. Splice Racks, that's right. Yeah, hilarious. Um, spice up your life. <laughs> um, so this is a bit random. I've obviously asked a few questions from um, what we've had on social media. Um, we've also got a guest, a, a, a special guest sitting next to Nui on the left-hand side, I think, who's going to ask a special question. Nui's got a rollerblader flatmate, um, <laughs> Callum. There he is. Hold yeah, right. on, he's got a stool. Josh, I don't know if you remember Callum. Callum's a, a young a young buck out of the um, Pukakaui scene who has a question oh, for Nui. What's up, mate? Wait. Just the U-name, bit of slice, mate. <laughs> well, Doug, mm -hmm. bit of a trip to America there. Yep. I want to know what you, what you thought of the whole trip. <laughs> Always skating in New Zealand. And also, I'd like to know who annoyed you the most. Tom. Um, <coughs> straight, up, straight away, no hesitation. Yeah. But why did Tim annoy you the most? <laughs> oh, just self-righteous, eh? You know, if it wasn't, you know, you've had it now. Plates at the window on those trips. You know, no remorse. Um, <laughs> heckling, heckling from right at the back all the time. Just nothing leaving me in the like elevated. Like, what happened? I got stuck in the fire escape. Like, I couldn't yeah, escape. What happened before that with the little red bag? The red really bag. the main the main culprit of this. So we're there for Isaac's glorious video, whatever he was doing, some kind of video. Um, obviously, I'm the dedicated filmer of the group, and we're at the like some what spot was it? Uh, some stupid so, uh, softball. Cool. The softball ledges, those green ledges that have been around for years. And um, I had the shot all nice, fading through the like wire fence into Isaac skating. Cool, cool, it's all in focus. Oh, there's Tim with a giant big red Medmen bag from some dispensary. All my colour gets blown out. All the thing goes to black in the background. Can't see anything. And he pretty much refused to move that damn bag for like a good half an hour until I like stormed over there and took it and like put it down somewhere else. And then he just sort of like sculpted over <laughs> and then put it straight back where it was right in the middle. And yeah, we had a, we we're close to the border, but we didn't have that type of standoff. Um, That's when you got home to the elevator. Oh yeah. And you're already annoyed. And then we're going back to the apartment and he, I think he pushed me out of the elevator on the wrong floor I no, got gave, gave you the keys to give to Isaac, and just as you got back to the door, he just pushes the door close button. And Nui's like, Really, Tim? And after that, we didn't see Nui for two hours. Oh, yeah, I went down <laughs> Sunset Boulevard at like 10 o'clock at night and just said hi to everybody. And it seems like they were way more sketched out than I was. They <laughs> <laughs> hide a random strangers in LA with a bum bag strapped to your chest because they think you're a drug dealer. <laughs> Meanwhile, you put in the Nui. Well, anyway, I had a real nice walk, saw some things. Um, I'll thank take it that, um, the thing Van, Van's not getting the soul plates now. Who? Van's not getting them. Tom? No. No, he shouldn't. <laughs> well, it's up to you. No. Nah. Well, you, how's he going to attach them to his clogs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he needs, he needs wooden ones. He does. He nuts. Yeah. He's nuts. Um, so what do you want to do next, Josh? Do you want to phone our next guest or we've got more small questions? Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm out. We can call someone if you want. Cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see what this does to our bandwidth. Okay, cool. I'm just going to call. Just see who will it, they'll answer. Yes. Put them on speaker.
Do you want to ask Millie? G'day. Is this the um, is this Slug Lord? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you speak up a bit? Hang on, hang on. Uh, I'm trying to get some blue shirts up in here. There we go. Is this Slug Lord? Hamish, it's Hamish McRae here. There we go. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, sick. So yeah, what up? So Slug, it's it's Neam and Joss. From the Cave Crew Shodcast, and then you've got um, Nui and Callum in the background as well. Yeah, what up, boys? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. 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 yeah, long hair game. Party in here. It is. So, yeah, we wanted to call and just ask you if you wanted to be our next guest. Yes, yeah, sick. Of course. Yes, please. Oh, That'd sweet. be awesome. Done. <laughs> Man. Hell yes. All right. Sweet. I love this Good show. I'm loving this show. I'm loving this podcast. Nice. Josh, you... Hmm? He, oh, you were saying something. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. I said, yeah, good answer. Because we, 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 didn't, we didn't know who we were going to do as number four. So we've been hanging around the mid-90s, pre-90s. So it's going to be good to talk to someone who's like still a solid part of the scene now. Yeah, Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah man oh thank you so much for answering the call and thank you for being um our next guest so we'll me and joss will jack something up and then hit you up and try to jack up a time yeah sounds awesome fellas i'm looking very forward to it i'm stoked cheers thank man you. Thanks, bro. Bro. talk, but talk to you soon <laughs> yeah. later slug how are you boys later bros later, later, bro. Bro. Hey. just like that yeah, See, Nui? See, yeah. Nui? That, that's what happens. You should answer your phone, man. Yeah, I'm building a retaining wall. So it's full on. <laughs> well, um, I'm running out of time. Um, cool mm. talking to you, man. Pretty good to see you guys. Been a while. Yeah. It's been Nothing? ages. It's been Maybe. ages, actually. It's going to be weird, like, if we ever, like, have another um, Older Bladers meet up. And actually skate at it will be cool. Mm. I don't think anyone will come because everyone will know everyone's secrets now and they'll be like, oh, no, it's mm. nah, you the new thing will be, oh, do you remember when you said such and such on that shotcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Shit, I don't <laughs> yeah. even need to do a spiel. No, he's doing it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, Oh, good, yeah. bro. Um, good talking to you. We'll see you. Yeah. We'll see you in, in Thanks. Auckland. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Noe. Thank you. Much appreciated. See you, bro. Peace. Awesome. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. See ya. Parents are very strict. Where are you going with those skates? Where are your helmet? Are you doing that too? Are you jumping on those banisters? <laughs>